tonight I'm feeling kind of bored so I thought it would be fun to kind of piggyback off of the video that I posted yesterday about my seventh grade photo. My little sister recently shared some old photos that I took in high school and they're so bad but they're hilarious and I thought it would be funny to kind of go through and just show how I've changed over the years and it's kind of going to be a good way for me to see how I've grown and changed for the better hopefully. Um, I don't know, I'm the type of person that loves seeing people's childhood photos and really bad high school photos, just any old photos. I mean, I used to, in college, I would go to thrift stores and I would buy other people's old photos because they would just have like bins of, and these were like really old photos, like black and white. I should find those, <clears throat> share them. I thought, I would maybe start with just a few childhood photos because I started out cute and then, then <laughs> I don't know what happened. I'll just share a few. I don't, does anyone even want to look at old photos of me? I don't care because I do. And in the spirit of making fun of myself, first, <laughs> the first photo I'm going to share is maybe my second Halloween. So this would be like 1988. My parents dressed me like a teen. And this outfit is actually cute and I pretty much wear this now. So they knew what they were doing my little jean jacket and my, I mean, I probably wouldn't wear that giant headband, but it's still pretty cute. The next one is what my family and I like to call the face. I don't know what I was doing or why I was making this face, but this is an infamous photo and everybody in my family knows what we're talking about when we say the face. So my tiny little chiclet beaver <laughs> teeth glistening in the, the camera's flash. One day, my sister and I decided we were bored and I don't know who, but someone got a pair of scissors. My sister gave me a bald spot, which you can see. And my dad thought it would be hilarious to pose us and recreate us cutting each other's hair and I'm still bitter because I just cut her bangs a little bit and she gave me a freaking bald spot and everyone laughed at me. <laughs> just smiling away. It's fine. That must have taken months to grow back. This is when I got glasses and my nerdy phase began except I was I think I was in third grade, so I had a few more years of being cute. And then puberty happened. This is probably only like 30% of the photos I took. And I remember this was all like in the early 2000s in high school. I graduated in 2005 so most of these were taken in like 2003-2004 and I remember researching the digital camera for us to buy for so long and the one we ended up getting was like four megapixels or something but it was like so good and just looking at all these photos they're just so bad <laughs> what is happening here so my first car was a Buick Skylark and I named him Roffington. I don't remember why. I think it was like an online joke with an internet friend, but I don't remember. But his name was Roffington. He had a name. And there's a bunch of photos of me posing with my car. I don't know what 
I was trying to do. It was just sitting in the driveway at my cousin's house. <laughs> and like a lot of these, I'm just being silly, but it's still funny because when you're a teen, you still want the photos to be cute because your self-esteem, or mine at least, was not great. And just looking at my clothing and hair choices and knowing what I know now about style, it's like, you just didn't hit it on the head, Maria. You did not, you look, you're having a time. Okay, so I found the seventh grade photo that I did the drawing of on my Instagram. So I'm gonna put that on the screen. I mean, the rest of my school photos after that, I think this one is eighth grade. So eighth grade, I finally got uh, contacts and it looks like I started plucking my eyebrows and I'm wearing a really cool kind of sheer snakeskin top. It was probably, it must've been my coolest top because I wore it to picture day because you know, you've got to look your best. And this is when I started getting really into thrifting. In high school, it was more about laughing at the clothes at the thrift store, like picking out ridiculous 80s clothes and laughing at them. But I still had a little bit of a flair for like vintage style, but I just didn't know how to style it properly. But I did, oh my God, there's so many pictures of me in my room, which was a mess. I'm definitely not like that anymore, but I mean, you know, I was like 16. But like all these photos of me with my camera on the self timer, like trying to get an outfit shot and everything is so blurry. Like, why did I even save these photos? <sighs> Dear Lord. <laughs> There's like six photos of Joan soda bottles because I was edgy and emo and I kept my Joan soda bottles on my windowsill. Ooh, here's one. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm pensively taking a selfie looking out the window and I'm in, I'm silhouetted by the light. My favorite movie is Amelie and it still is and I obviously saw it first in high school and I wanted to be just like her so that's why my hair is short but I just don't have the, the bone structure for it so I just look like I have a helmet on my head and it's not cute and I pretty much look like that all through high school all right now we're getting into some of the emo <laughs> photos this is just sad <laughs> Oh my God. Okay, so <laughs> I was really into bright eyes during this time. I mean, who wasn't in 2003? But it's indicative that I was into uh, design even then because I would take these emo selfies and then I would uh, put lyrics over the top, like typography. It's not typography, it's just terrible. Oh my God, and I must have put these online. Here we go, here's some photos of me at the thrift store. So we, yeah, we would just find the stupidest, ugliest 80s clothes we could and just pose in them. And we got kicked out of the store a few times because we were being obnoxious. And my thing for a long time was buying t-shirts from the little boys section found a lot of Harry Potter t-shirts thrifting. So my uniform was my chucks, which had doodles all over them. Jeans, studded belt. Here's a little boy shirt. And this one is actually cute. I kind of wish I still had it, except there's no way that would fit me now. And then my stupid helmet hair. Not cute. It's just not. So do I even want to reveal this? In high school, my friends and I, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so basically my mom 
had a bunch of Richard Simmons videos <laughs> and my friends and I found them and we became obsessed. Like Richard Simmons is a mood and you know, they, the videos were very 80s and obviously my friends and I thought that whole era was hilarious. For some reason, we just got super into it and we decided we were gonna recreate a, a video and yours truly played the part of Richard. I can't believe I'm showing this, but you know what? This is me, Richard. <laughs> I'm never gonna find a boyfriend after this. <laughs> Whatever, it was so fun. Uh. <laughs> I'm not sure what's going on. We had a friend, Jeff, that was super flamboyant. And he just loved to like pole dance and prance around with no clothes. So he's just wearing sparkly pants. And I don't really think <laughs> that it has anything to do with the video. But you know, he was special. He passed away. So these are bittersweet to look through because he was... I mean, we lost touch way before he died, but Jeff, you made high school fun. Because these videos, I mean, these videos were funny anyway, but Jeff took it to the next level. <laughs> He's just wearing like a leopard bikini and just loving, loving it. Pole dancing. Anyway, love you, Jeff. So yeah, we made a Richard video. I don't know if the video still exists. It's lost in the nethers. And all I have are these photos. So I talked about this a little bit on my friend's podcast. But I talked about this time in my life when I was, you know, on like live journal and MySpace and stuff. And that can mess with your self-esteem a lot because even though looking at these photos like everyone else's photos were not much better but you you always compare yourself to other people and there are these things on live journal called rating communities and they were basically like popularity clubs where you would have to fill out like an application with photos of yourself and like music that you were into so it was all like emo stuff you know you would have to name all the obscure emo indie bands and I probably just copy pasted from other people because I was like I'll just pretend that I know what these bands are and I applied for a few and I got roasted like so yeah I mean I know that these photos aren't cute now or ever but I was a fragile creature and I don't know why I subjected myself to that because the whole idea is stupid, but you know, I, I grew up, like I said, kind of being made fun of by the cool kids. So when I, during this time, I thought that my style was cute and my, my whole personal style was way better than it was in seventh grade. So I thought I was getting somewhere. So when I applied to these rating communities, and they were still like shitting on me. I was like, okay, cool. This is great. So I don't know the moral of the story. I just wanted to talk about rating communities and how stupid they are. Oh, here we go. I started experimenting even more when I got into college because you know, I went to art school and I had to uphold the look of an artsy cool scene kid. So I gave myself skunk hair and I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And I think I discovered um, like hair razors that you can get at like Sally Beauty and it 
you use it to like kind of thin the texture of your hair so it's more like PC. I mean, it looks better than the helmet, minus the ridiculous skunk stripe. Let's just ignore that. I had fire engine red hair at one point. And my mom was like, why can't you just be happy with the hair color that God gave you? I mean, my hair is kind of cute here. I wouldn't do it like that now. But it's way better than it was in other times. I'm definitely going to get cancer one day because of the amount of times that I dyed my hair. So artsy. What am I doing? <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this embarrassing trip down memory lane. Here I have like a, I guess I'm trying to grow out a fashion moment. That was cool in 2007. <laughs> My two phases are hipster art school kid or 45 year old soccer mom. There's no in between. There still isn't. I kind of looked like I was trying to be Justin Bieber even though he was probably like seven at this time. These are the vibes. Like I couldn't make up my mind what my style was supposed to be. I tried my best. I don't know what else to say. At least now I know not to cut my hair like that. It's just not a look that suits me. In high school, I mentioned the live journal rating communities and I met this guy through one of them and he lived in Florida and we developed like an online relationship. And we actually ended up um, meeting because my family went to Florida for Christmas, senior year of high school, and he drove like three hours to come see me. And I told everyone in my family that like, he was some old friend that I knew from middle school that moved to Florida, but everybody knew that was incorrect. So surprise, it didn't end up working. And I was really depressed about it. And there was this guy that I knew through my best friend, Caitlin, that actually went to another school, but he totally liked me. And he was like such a sweet guy. And I still feel bad that I, he would have been a really nice person to date, but you know, I was very depressed and emo and probably constantly posting like cryptic away messages on my instant messenger. So this one time, he, he drove to my house and rang my doorbell and then like sped off <laughs> and I opened the door and he, he, I don't know if it was a bunch of roses or one rose, but it, it had this message that said, feel better backwards. Cause he didn't want my parents to read what it said. Cause they wouldn't be able to figure it out apparently. So that was cute. Here's my uh, emo grandma Amelie phase, which somebody on Instagram coined Grandmamelie. <laughs> it's so accurate. Here we go. Maria favorites. Seriously, some of these were my favorites. How? This is my favorite. It's me looking out the window, just being so deep and depressed about life. That uh, window crank thing is really adding to the picture. Wow. I just found a folder of a bunch of my friends from high school. And I'm sure most of these people are freaking married. Not me. For the amount of pictures that I took of myself, you'd think that I would get the hang of taking better ones, but you'd be wrong. You'd be very wrong.
I look like the cat like that has the helmet cut out of like a lime or something. This is what my haircut looks like. And I walked around like that for a long time. I distinctly remember, oh, dang it, it's not big enough. That's what she said. <laughs> There's a random baby photo in a folder that doesn't have any other baby photos, but it's a photo of me giving <laughs> the most intense, like side eye stink face. Um, I've never seen a more accurate photo of myself ever. And I was like one in this photo. So you know my RBF, it goes way back. It's it's always been a part of me. I guess that's comforting, right? Just a few more. I've always had imposter syndrome because even looking at these photos now, like if I didn't know me and I saw these, I would think that that girl was cool. But because it was me, I felt like I was playing a role and that people would find out how nerdy and dumb I actually was. Oh, how did I miss this? So, <laughs> I think this was after I graduated. Oh yeah, it was before, it was like the summer before I went to art school and I cut all my hair off and wore a faux hawk. You'll see. It's not cute. I remember going to Warp Tour with my sister and you know, I was rocking the faux hawk. And I remember some guy came up to me and he was, he was basically like, yeah, you go, good for you. Cause he thought that I like was gay <laughs> and was like coming out as my true self wearing my butch haircut. I don't really know, but I was like, okay. I'm just minding my own business. But like, <laughs> yeah, if you saw this, you'd be like, yeah, I'm not sure if she likes boys. And that's fine. I'm grateful for these times when I just looked so stupid because it makes you humble. I can just remember like the way I felt about myself. And it's like, oh, that poor girl, she's struggling, she's trying, she's having a hard time. She's just trying to express herself by taking really bad photos. <laughs> I think that's enough.